This programme features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. A look at that. The little chief is now resting on his way to the Galagopen, which is the nearest uh, waterhole from where he was just now. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the afternoon safari. I am Sydney Fumulani Mikosi and I'm traveling with Sebastian, who is my camera operator. My plan for this afternoon is already executed. I have got the spotted cat, Hosanna, and on behalf of the team, apologies for the inconveniences. For your questions and comments, you can follow us on Twitter, hashtag Safari Live. You can also follow us on YouTube chat stream. So you can see that uh, Hosanna is now very much pretty relaxed. He has just been to the kill that he discovered earlier this morning, the kill that we are not too sure who is responsible. Look now, you can see he's about to move. Maybe he just want to change a positioning or he is now moving to the water hole. So it's time for grooming. So unfortunately, the leopards, they don't uh, travel as a group like the lions whereby they are going to help grooming each other. Here, uh, grooming amongst leopards is only when there is a little one or during the mating activities when trying to impress the females and females trying to impress the males. The solitary males don't have any companion. They've got to uh, help themselves. So now let's go to oh, the biggest prey for the predators. The leopard cannot survive there. Dangerous buffaloes. Indeed, we have a really nice grouping of buffalo that is at Gallego Pan. So not very far from where Hosanna is at the moment. There's a really nice herd that has come down for a afternoon drink. I'm pretty sure it's the same herd that was accosted by the lions yesterday, but they've managed to kind of go into Bufuzuk and then have turned and come all the way back this side. Now, as Sydney said, welcome to our afternoon safari. Sorry that we were a little bit delayed. A little gremlins in the system that cause a bit of trouble. Now you might also see me squinting. It's because I've got sun cream in my eyes and I'm dying at the moment. So I'm trying to kind of get rid of it, but I do apologize. Anyway, my name is Tristan on camera. I've got Senzo and we are coming to you live from South Africa. We will also be coming to you live from Kenya this afternoon. And so remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter and then also on the YouTube chat on at FC. Keep it relevant and we'll try and answer as much as possible. Now, really nice to have some some beefies around. We were looking for Tandi because she was obviously around the kill with Hosanna this morning and when we went past we managed to see Hosanna with Sydney and then we thought well we'll come and look here quickly because there's no sign of Tandi there to see if maybe she was at the pan having a bit of a drink but the pan is well occupied by Buffalo and so I doubt that she will be here at the moment. I also didn't find any tracks of her kind of crossing in this direction so she might still be that side. This is also of course that bushbuck that is dead on the opposite side of quarantine but I've been monitoring that all day and so far nothing has come down. It was tested, a blood sample was taken just in case um, but everybody was quite happy that it wasn't any sign of anthrax or anything like that. It just looks like an old male that has reached his kind of end of his lifespan and so I wonder if maybe Tandy hasn't headed that way. Hopefully if she does show up that side we will kind of be able to find her with it but We'll kind of check that a little bit later. I'm sure the hyenas will also be around. For now, we're going to spend some time with our buffalo. It's a nice big herd. So even though it's just these guys that you see here at the water point itself, there is a whole big grouping behind us. You can see there in the thickets lying down is the rest of the herd. So I would imagine that there's probably a good hundred odd buffalo here, um, which is a really nice group. And whether or not the lions followed them into Juma, well, we don't know. We'll have to go and kind of scratch around north of these guys to check. Um, they would have come from the Buffalo's hook side to be able to get into this area to come and have a drink and, and maybe just maybe the lions might have followed them. I believe that their calls and their tracks were right in the sort of northeastern side of Juma crossing into Buffalo's Hook that way and so I'm pretty sure if they are around well then they must kind of have to, well they would have had to have walked a very long way to get to this particular point during the course of the day and given that it's been quite warm I'm not sure 
the Lions would have done it. They might do it later in the evening, but I don't think they would have done it just yet. Now, you'll notice that most of the animals that have been drinking here are bulls. Um, so the bulls will be the first ones that come down well, not first ones, should I say, last ones that are going to have water. The rest of the herd would have had already. You can tell by the amount of tracks and sort of um, dung and, and all kinds of signs that have been left by these guys, as well as the amount of water that's been spilt on all around the pan itself, that they have been here for quite some time. And obviously the bulls will just hang around. I'm surprised there isn't a bull that isn't plopped down in the actual pan itself. It's probably because this pan has got a sort of concrete base to it. And that concrete is a little bit kind of slippery with the hooves and so I don't think they really like the feel of it as they walk in. I would imagine if this was a more kind of muddy pan like we're telepan, we might have seen these guys having a bit of a wallow. Anyway, we'll sit with these guys for a little bit. We'll enjoy the company of our buffalo. There's a yellow bulldog specker there too, which is quite nice. Anyway, we'll sit with these guys for a while, but while we do, let's send you back all the way to the Mass well, not back, to the Mass Amara for the first time, so you can all say hello to David, and he can say hello to all of you. Hello, everybody, and uh, buffaloes tend to drink lots of water, and that's why many times when you see them dropping the poo, is always semi-solid and a very warm welcome to the Masimara Triangle. My name is David and hiding behind the camera today is Archie. Archie, how are you doing? All good. Warm welcome again and remember this is a very interactive safari that we do. Should you have any questions or any comments to give us, you are more than welcome to do that using hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. We're just watching now the savannah or the Mara Triangle, huge spans, and they're trying to tell you or show you there were thousands and thousands of wildebeest here a few days ago, and almost all of them now are gone. Almost because we've got a few pockets of wildebeest left, and this is the Mara Triangle, the savannah area. We got a few zebras left. It's not that all migration is gone. And you can see at that point, some zebras still feeding on the short grass, but not a single wildebeest with them. All the trees you see there are the iconic tortured trees of the Masimara. Mohamed, I'm not sure whether you were watching yesterday and we're very lucky to have a sport narrator yesterday. And what we'll do, Achi is feeling like we might spot a cheetah today. And having said that, we all see zebras every day, Mohamed. Cross fingers, stay tuned, and you never know what you might get. So we're going to have one more quick at those zebras and then head out because, Mohamed, this is very good uh, cheetah country. Short grass like this, should you see Thompson gazelles, there could be a possibility of sporting a cheetah. So keep watching and you never know. So these are the common zebras or the plains zebras. We got two species of zebras in Kenya, this one, and further north of Kenya, we got another species that's called the gravy zebra. Always feeding on the short grass just like the wildebeest and most of it having been trampled by the massive numbers of the migration that has been walking around this area the last couple of months. Well, we got cats that also feed on zebras and I think Sydney got one. I have got Hosanna who is now slowly approaching the Galago pen where I am seeing quite a number of buffaloes. Here I can see he is now going down trying to approach the water hole. I don't know if he's gonna make it there as these buffaloes they look very much big to him. But he's not worried about them, he's keep moving. He's just about to get to the water hole now. He is looking at them and he decided to lie down here now. He can see that these are very big animals. They can give him tough time. So he's now right looking at the buffaloes who are at about uh, 250 meters away from him approximately. 
Rosalind, the African buffaloes can be very much dangerous, uh, specifically if you meet them on foot. These kind of animals are so very much aggressive. So when it comes to the predators, they can team up and retaliate against a predator of whatever kind. It's not easy for a predator to just take down a buffalo. So look at that, he is looking at those buffaloes. So the wind is on his favor. I'm sure those buffaloes are not aware yet about his presence. If they pick up his scent, they were going to investigate. The buffaloes has got a very good sense of smell. So I'm sure Hosanna is lying, lying down here for his own safety. Uh, Michelle, I am allowed to drive uh, wherever I, am, I, I want, but they are restricted areas and it's also determined by the type of sightings. We don't drive, we don't drive off road for all these animals. So there's only certain species that we can follow, such as the cats. So he's still looking at those buffaloes. Uh, thank you very, very much for showing some interest on finding Hosanna. I am going to be with Hosanna this afternoon. I am also missing him a lot. I haven't seen Hosanna for quite some time. And I can see that his health status is perfect. This cat is growing very nicely. He doesn't want to be appraised. You can see he's looking at me when I'm trying to give him good comments. <laughs> Maybe he is interested on my compliments. So this cat is interacting a lot with the scavengers such as the hyenas. So now uh, let's go to Tristan who also got a better visual on buffaloes than Hosanna at the moment. We do. We have a very up close and personal view of our buffalo that are right here. And it's funny that Hosanna is around. He was, you know, kind of milling about on the other side earlier. And I had a thought he might come this way, but maybe the buffalo just made him come a little bit faster. But we've uh, just kind of been watching the buffalo. They were all a bit panicked because a water buck ran away from Hosanna and ran through towards this area. Now, these guys, I'm pretty sure, are going to settle down and just kind of s sit in the shade. I wouldn't be surprised they go for another drink before night falls. Uh, they don't look t too perturbed by the fact that Hosanna is around, but they are a bit on edge. And I'm sure it's because of yesterday's sort of horrible day that they had being chased around by lions. I would imagine that there's also... Imagine there's also kind of the smell of those guys still hanging around after the last few days. But there's a really big bull that's going to make his way in. There's also a hyena that I can see that's close to Hosanna in the background. So you'll see where the hyena and Hosanna and Seb and Sydney all are at the back there. It's going to be buffalo, hyena, leopard, Seb and Sydney. There we go. And an aerial, just for good measure, just to make sure that we've got everything all in one right now we're going to carry on we're going to leave these guys to have the sighting while we do that let's send you across to them and you can see what it looks like from their end you can see that uh, another animal has just arrived now the hyena who seems not afraid of the buffalo the hyena went past hosanna just about three meters away from him not worried he's now running very very quickly down to the water hole Look at that hyena, he's going right to where the buffalo is. So maybe the hyena wants to share some uh, water with the buffalo. Look at that. This is amazing. 
and also Hai, uh, uh, Hosanna is going down there. So both hyena and the buffaloes are drinking at the same time. Now the hyena is the hyena is having a bath. This is getting very interesting. Look at that. He is now off the water, and we are going to have the cat, the hyena, and the buffalo right at the same place. Look at that. You can see that now Hosanna is on standby right here looking at the hyena as well as the buffaloes at the water hole. It's all happening at the same place. Look at that. Now Hosanna is slowly moving, approaching towards the water hole and then he decided to lie down there. And the hyena is just off the water hole. But there's a little bit of water there where he is. Uh, he is trying to uh, cool down his body temperature. The buffalo is not worried at all. So this is something interesting. We've got this very big graze of the buffalo. And we've got this scavenger right there, that hyena. And we've got this predator here. And this is happening within a 50 meters radius. Look at that. You can see now that uh, hyena is moving again much more towards the buffalo side. These animals uh, who drink water a lot more than buffaloes do, uh, water-dependent species such as the elephants, they can drink up to 150 to 200 liters of water a day. But if you can check buffaloes, their diet is consisted of the grass, and during summer season, grass is very much moist. But uh, the elephants, both summer and dry season, they do concentrate on sticks. Yes, the leaves are also very much more moisturized, but they need to eat, to drink quite a lot of water to assist their digestive system. So the hyena decided to go away, and the buffalo is still drinking there with Hosanna, having a sighting of the buffalo. So we are having a sighting on Hosanna, while Hosanna is having a sighting of the buffalo and the hyenas. This is amazing. More buffaloes are still approaching, and high, this uh, leopard is just looking at them. The wind is still on our favor, and is still on uh, Hosanna's favor. Uh, the buffalo seems not worried about the presence of that hyena. So, like I said earlier on, buffaloes, they normally encounter serious challenges with the mobbing behavior of the prides of lions. So I don't think a buffalo big as that size can be worried about the uh, hyena. I think that will be fine. So you can see another uh, buffalo has just arrived now. So now we are just going to uh, do the unscheduled broadcast due to this uh, amazing sighting. And look at that, I have got this very big predator here looking at one of the biggest grazers in the area. This is Hosanna, our little chief, looking at a small head of the buffaloes. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the special broadcast. I am Sydney Pumana Mikosi. I am with my camera operator, uh, Sebastian. We are going to bring you this very special moment here by the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Juma Game Reserve. For your questions and comments, you can follow us on Twitter, hashtag Safari Live. You can also follow us on YouTube, Chat Stream. Look at that. This is amazing. I have never experienced something like this before. Here, just now, we just had the hyena, the buffalo, as well as the leopard at the same spot, less than 50 meters radius. Look, the buffaloes are drinking at the moment, not worried about the presence of this predator. So I've got a lovely question uh, about the buffaloes, uh, the hyena, as well as the leopard. If this leopard could make it, taking down such a very big uh, prey, 
I can disagree with that because these buffaloes are very much big and this predator looks very much small. He cannot survive taking down a buffalo. Even lions, solitary lions, won't make it when it comes to the big animals such as this. There's quite a lot of efforts needed in order to take down just one buffalo. So you can see that here, he is just hiding there for his own safety. He doesn't want to interact. So let's see, maybe that uh, a big male who's moving much more this side will be able to pick up his presence. But what is favoring this cat at the, at the moment is the wind direction. The wind direction is coming towards our direction, which is the direction where he is. This buffalo is right now looking at Hosanna. So I am not too sure if that buffalo could see him where he is because they are just uh, less than uh, 30 meters apart. Kaleen, the buffalo, is not going to get worried about the hyenas as well. Those are just uh, uh, small predators to this kind of big, big, big uh, grazers. So you can see this buffalo looks big and it looks very much healthy. If you can check the bush at the moment, it looks very much dry, but this buffalo looks in a very, very good condition. Hyena uh, cannot possibly stand uh, the buffaloes. Uh, Jackie has got a lovely question here, which is about who does most of the hunting bec between the male and female leopards. So the male leopards, they also hunt for themselves because these kind of species are solitary. This is one of the species whereby these animals just walk by themselves. Females, they do quite a lot of hunting when they are having the cubs because they've got to get something for their cubs to eat. So, but now all the males and females, it is their responsibilities. Unlike the lions whereby hunting activities are much more facilitated by the females. <laughs> Grace, this is uh, something else. You can see that these animals are very close. Let's see, maybe that buffalo is pretending not seeing Hosanna, but I can see that he is now avoiding uh, where Hosanna is. I don't think both um, buffaloes who have been here managed to see uh, Hosanna where he is at the moment. Edmond, when it comes to the buffaloes, the bulls are much more aggressive. And sometimes you will see the bulls just walking by themselves with a lot of mud. Those are the bulls which are regarded as the darker boys. Duck is just a simple name referring to mud. It's like a mud boy. Those are very much aggressive. They are very temperamental. The females, they are not that very temperamental. That is why on a group, when a buffalo, when a troop of buffaloes is walking, you will see the big males in front. Those are called the pathfinders. They are there for the safety of the whole troop. So now you can see that no much activities are taking place at the moment and this is now bringing us to the end of the very special broadcast and thank you very very much for all your questions and comments. Now I will be heading back to the normal game drive. Welcome back. I am still here by the Buffalo and Hosanna sighting and at the moment Hosanna is just looking at this uh, Buffalo. Looking at the ears and the concentration, I can promise you he doesn't have much interest. When Hosanna got interest, the ears keep swiveling every time and head moving very quickly. And his positioning is telling, look at, now he's changing a position, look at that. He's just trying to arrange himself. Let's see what he's thinking. Bless you. Thank you. 
So that was my camera operator, Seb. <laughs> so you can see now that this cat has just rearranged the positioning. And they say Nyala coming to the water hole as well. Maybe the Nyala is what is fascinating Hosanna at the moment. I can see the Nyala at a very short distance, also heading towards the very same water hole. And the position of Hosanna is telling me something is coming. As I indicated earlier that when he's interested on something, you will see the ears and look at the positioning now. You can see he's aiming at something. There is a Nyala right by the open space, not very far away from where he is, slowly approaching the water hole at the moment. And this Nyala is still keep coming. And I can see that uh, Osana is right aiming at this Nyala. You can see that male Nyala is coming. Maybe something is, look at him now, he is uh, again um, uh, trying to camouflage by all means. He is hiding very nicely where he is. Something might happen here. So I'm sure the Nyala is so very confident that there is no predator in the area due to the presence of the buffaloes. Maybe it's going to be difficult for uh, Hosanna to take any action due to the presence of this buffalo because the buffalo is still also right here at the very same water hole. Uh, Lily, this is so very exciting. The Nyala and the buffalo are just less than eight meters apart and the Nyala and Hosanna, they are just less than uh, 20 meters apart. The problem is in between the Nyala and the Hosanna, there is a buffalo. <laughs> and if Hosanna decides to do something now, the buffalo might be threatened and come against him. He is on a very awkward position at the moment. So the buffaloes are one of those animals which can, their lifespan can go up to 20 years. And these animals can weigh up to 800 kilograms, up to a ton. So they are very much big animals. So you can see the nyala, that nyala picked up uh, the movement of something you saw. And what the Nyala is doing might jeopardize himself because he's coming around the water hole and he's coming right towards the right direction. You can see Hosanna now is, is getting a lot of interest. He is right aiming at the Nyala and the Nyala is looking at something. I'm not really sure because he's aiming direction of Hosanna. Look at that. This Nyala is coming towards the dangerous zone. So you can see that now uh, he is still concentrating on that Nyala and the Nyala he did not pick up any presence of this lovely cat. Uh, Paulina, it is very much rare for this kind of animal to take down such... I can see now something is happening. The buffalo managed to pick up the presence of Osana. I can see that the buffalo is not comfortable at all and there is another male buffalo approaching who also read the signal of a family member. I can see something is happening right here. This buffalo just picked up some signal from one of the big males who just picked up the presence of Hosanna now. So let's see what is going to happen here. The uh, probabilities are very high for these buffaloes to chase Osana or for Osana to retrieve at any time here. Angela, Osana must have to be very much extra careful when it comes to these very big, big grazers. 
But I can see that when it comes to the buffaloes, it doesn't have uh, interest at all. So maybe the buffaloes as well don't have interest on him. Let's see, you can see one buffalo is now slowly moving towards the water hole. This is the buffalo who was also looking at Hosanna during the approach. You can see that he is trying to investigate here at the moment. So I am not alone here at this sighting. Don't get surprised when hearing some other engines and the camera clicks. So one buffalo is looking at this direction while the other one is looking at the direction. So I can see that they are not comfortable at the moment. Only one buffalo had something to drink. Another one has just arrived. Look at that. You can see he's turning. This buffalo has spotted Hosanna. So you can see now they are avoiding the water hole. But one of them is still very much concerned. You can see he's turning again, looking back. The buffaloes don't have a very good eyesight. They normally rely on their sense of smell. But how he's looking, I can tell you, he is sure something is here. Scott, the buffaloes, they've got a very good sense of smell. Poor eyesight, a good hearing ability, and good sense of smell. So I can see now that uh, these buffaloes are leaving the water hole which means now Hosanna is going to have something to drink at any time, unless he wants to wait until they all got disappeared. So now let's go back to the Masai Mara where David uh, he is also looking for something very interesting for you. I'm not sure how his search is doing, but let's see. Well, welcome back to the Mara, and I got a feeling the Duke of Juma, Tingana, should start getting worried of Hosanna. Maybe by the end of the year or next year, Hosanna will be a force to reckon with around that area. Well, my plans today is to look for the sausage trip, right? This is the area they are always found, and the last I saw them were in this particular forest here where I saw one of the females in the sausage trip ride with her two young cubs. I haven't seen any, not even a sign of the lions around here, but I'm still trying to look in these bushes. I think if we're gonna drive the camera to that area, we might see any. But we'll tell you what, well, that's one pan where they'd be drinking. Thank you, Archie, for that. Unlike Juma, in the Mara it's a bit difficult, but what I'd say here in the Mara, we are not allowed to drive off the road. So we're still searching for anything there as Archie is spanning the camera. And it's a lot easier say to drive off the road in Juma, but in the Mara it's very difficult to drive off the road. One, we are not allowed to do that unless we have a confirmed sighting. And the the terrain here is also a bit rough. There's so many holes, so many boulders and rocks, and it becomes a bit tricky just to drive over them without being sure. So we have leopards, yes, but I believe not as many leopards as we have in Juma. I think the last leopard I saw was about a month ago, and that's quite some time. And when I was Juma, I remember seeing a leopard every two days. At most, on the third day, I would spot a leopard. So my plan today is to look for the sausage tree pair of lions. We've got so many pairs of lions in the Masimara Triangle, almost 10. Michelle, the Mara Triangle is huge. We are talking of about uh, 500 square kilometers, 500 square kilometers. And the whole of the Mara, in general, the Mara Game Reserve, 
is about 1,500 square kilometers, Michelle. It's a huge game reserve by any standard, huge, huge. And to cover most of it, you need so many days out here looking and looking. But most likely, in every time we go out on a drive, I think we only cover 2%, if not less, on one single given drive. So this is the last I saw the sausage tripper. There's one female that has two cubs, as I was saying before, and that was not long ago. Two days ago, but she is nowhere to be seen. And I was talking of the many prize that we have in the Mara Triangle. I know of 10 but there's one, the sausage tree pride that I love following. Remember, this is a very interactive safari. Should you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask using hashtag safari live on Twitter. Ruben, around this area, there's a coalition of males that roam and rule this particular part and there's one male lion that we call Kipuli. Kipuli have like a split nose that's why we call him Kipuli and he is my favorite. He is huge and anytime we get some say new males or nomadic lion males coming to try him out he does not give them room and he is very quick just to dispose them. About two weeks ago he fought of two males one in the morning and one in the afternoon in the same day and it was quite something talking of a lion male let's go to a male leopard look at that you can see hosanna has just now arrived at the water hole but it seems not comfortable it seems like there's something coming from the direction where he came from because he skipped looking back at that direction earlier on when we saw the hyena same thing happened he was looking back all the time and then the hyena was coming they can be able to hear from a very long distance look at that it's quite a very difficult drinking process make use of the tongue to collect water from a water hole like this is never easy Rosalind, uh, these kind of animals, they do take uh, impalas. Look at that, you can see it's looking at something. They take prey such as impalas, but they also take some of the uh, babies from animals such as the kudus. So sometimes, yes, if Hosanna has this record of Hosanna taking down a nyala. So you can take that kind of a big antelope. But for the couple, uh, of which I have seen that uh, Hosanna has gained quite a lot of strength because not long time ago he took down an impala and about last month I saw him battling uh, to move one of the impalas up which was which was caught by one of the other males Umfokazi Alan, I am very sure the prey animals can be able to distinguish between the two. I am saying this because I can also distinguish between the descent of the leopards and the lions as well as the hyenas. And if with my little gift sense of smell I can be able to di distinguish between the two, I can promise you the prey animals with their anti-predator strategy can be able to tell the difference. <laughs> he need a straw yeah that is quite a lovely comment so i think uh, if he is going to concentrate from the straw he won't be able to uh, watch out for his own safety so it's good that he's using the tongue and he can be able to check the sides all the time Janika, he's not that very big uh, for his age. The thing is, here where Hosanna is, there is quite a lot of uh, densely populated prey. 
So this animal has got quite a lot of fresh food to eat. So that's why he's growing very much healthy. So this is the right age for a cat which is between 18 to 22 months. So you can see that it's very thirsty because they lose quite a lot of water. They've got to concentrate on both ground and the trees. So climbing a tree needs quite a lot of energy and they lose quite a lot of uh, energy as well. So look at that. You can hear the birds are now starting to complain about his presence. So reason why birds uh, becomes vocal against these predators is that the leopards has got a wide uh, range of diet which includes them so that's why you can see it's looking at them now so now uh, let's go back to David in the Mara uh, and see how his search is doing I will be after Hosanna can see that he's now starting to sniff the leopard droppings. Well, most cats maybe after having eaten some, you know, prey, they'll always go for a drink. I'm not sure whether Hosanna has done that. We've got the majestic largest mammals in Africa or in the world, the Ellies, who just walking through the savannah and feeding as they walk along with either swallows on the ground there, to keep flopping or flying up and down. They'll pick any green plants they like. You can see they're not concerned on the grass. They're just doing more of the green plants and not the grass. Heart of Alice here with their young ones. Sometimes when they uproot a plant, it doesn't come out they'll give it a small little knock with the foot just to get it off the ground and I think these youngsters here are learning how to eat solid food from their mothers see how she moves her right foot I'm not sure that is to uproot anything but that's trying to read us on finding out what we are up to. John, I think elephants have very good uh, hearing, sense of hearing, and I've noticed when I'm out and we scream, and I've always, you know, I remember one time we were small boys in my village, and they saw Ellie's coming to eat uh, the gardens of our crops or the crops we had in the garden, we would hear people screaming from where they were. And when they would scream, the elephants would turn away and we would ask them, we heard you screaming and the elephants would turn. And my estimate is about a kilometer to two kilometers. A mile and a half, I think an elephant will comfortably hear what could be happening, if not more. Hello there. So you see the tall grass here, it's very dry and definitely not of any nutrition value. JW, true elephants are very majestic and not sure JW have heard me saying that elephants are my most favorite mammals in Africa. Hopefully JW you'll join me by also Owning elephants as your favorite animals. So most likely that's the mother of that calf at the back. Learning how to eat grease. Teens are very difficult to age elephants at, you know, at this particular size. But I would give it, let me say, almost eight months. Oh, it's about eight months. Elephants are bone big. They're bone heavy. Oops, what did you try to do there? And elephants are born like 100 kilograms or over 200 pounds in weight. So I'm not surprised if I would say this could be anything like six months or about eight months. When fully grown, sometimes we use their ears to age them. 
and we'll always look on how torn their ears are and that will give slightly bit of an indication of how old they could be sometimes looking at the size of their tusks which keep growing all their lives Caroline, I think two, two and a half years baby elephants will start showing signs of tusks coming up so Carla, two, two and a half years you'll start seeing them showing uh, or tusks coming out and as I just said the tusks keep growing for the rest of the lives of elephants and they're made of keratin, the protein keratin which is very important to them because they need the tusks to either break trees to dig for roots or to dig anything or for water when it's very dry sometimes when males fight they use the tusks and unless genetically you see an elephant without tusks both males and females here will have tusks unlike the Asian elephants where females don't have tusks we have seen some having much smaller tusks than others or some being born without tusks and all that is because of genetic reasons I just gonna turn one more time because the sky looks very beautiful let me see what magic Archie will do with the elephants here and the beautiful sky Archie tell me what you think is good for you there is it good all right I'd say that's fine we're just watching them walking towards the sunset and definitely maybe ending up on some higher grounds than where they are Remember, this is a very interactive safari we do. Should you have any questions, please send them over. And should you have any comments, do the same. Uh, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Yes, um, that's really gorgeous. And I would stay here for all, as long as these elephants are there with all those birds flying just next to them, not sure what they're looking for. We have always seen the white egrets walking close to the elephants as they disturb the grass. They jump on the insects that they pick them up. Christian, I would say I've seen one time rhinos in the midst of elephants and they didn't have much of an issue, but very quickly, shortly after, they went separate ways. The only time I've seen rhinos getting along, they get along together with buffaloes, but Ellis and rhinos, I highly doubt. They'll meet and each of them will go on different ways. One more look on this Ellis before we move on. And I need to go look for my sausage trip, right? Look at that beautiful sky. And the mothers will always want to keep the calves in the front. Keep walking once in a while, they flop their ears. It's not very warm now that you why you see there's not a lot of motion on their ears so as they move on i gonna leave them and go look for my prize today the sausage tree pride but let's find out if hosanna is up to anything or he's just snoozy so you can see that now hosanna is uh, very much pretty relaxed and where he is is on a very difficult spot to find he's got a very nice bed there so there's a little hole which has been dug. I don't know who dug that hole. He's using it in order to cool down his body temperature because there is no sun at the hole. Look at these spots. You can see now the stomach is full because of drinking too much water. So maybe that water is eating quite a lot of uh, load uh, in the cat. So that's why now the cat is, look at how he's resting. It's a very well designed spot. And he's got even a pillow to lean against. So he's listening to something. <laughs> he's got quite a very comfortable bed. Look at that. And very next to the road, but you won't see him. So it means uh, we might have already passed him on several occasions hiding by this spot. Maybe this is one of his usual spots. Ruby.
Ruben, a group of leopards, uh, when you've got male and females and cubs, is called a leap. And leopards, unfortunately, you won't see the males socializing together like lions do. It's very much rare to see the two male leopards together, like what we are seeing here in Juma. Every time when seeing them together is when they have got something to do with food competition. But you will never see them like walking together and grooming each other, playing together. It's very much rare. So the leopards, when they grow up, they, they've got to leave the family and start their own families. So it's quite a very difficult life. So normally they remain with their mothers for about a year. After a year, the chances of them to leave their mothers and establish their own is high. When they are about 18 to 22 months is when they will be really solitary. But to introduce own families, it's still going to take time. They must have to take at least four to five years. So you can see this cat is so very cute indeed when he's sleeping, look at that. And he's not worried at all. So it means this cat is still going to be here for quite a while. So I'm going to wait and see. The thing is, he is hiding at a distance of just about 100 meters again uh, away from the water hole, meaning that other species can come here at any time for drinking. So we might see some of the activities taking place here this afternoon. So now that I've got uh, Hosanna, Tristan is also looking for his own leopard. I know Tristan is very good on tracking leopards. Well, we are looking for another leopard and not because we're tracking them. We can't find any sign of Tandi where she went. Maybe she's still lying somewhere there in a little thicket having a good afternoon nap. She doesn't have the same energy as what Hosanna does, but while we were driving around I got a message from Ali and Brent saying that they heard a leopard sawing somewhere around Gauri, Cutline, Central, that area. So we've come this way, can't find any tracks on Central Road. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Hyena Road. I'm going to check Pufasuk Dam quickly because often if Tingana is walking on that northern boundary and comes in, he often goes to Pufasuk Dam for a drink. So we're going to just quickly check there. If nothing there, then we'll come back round and go towards that bushbuck carcass. It really is smelling very bad. We went past it just now. It's very, very stinky and uh, should start attracting things. Lots of hyenas moving around close to the dam and so I'm hoping that that kind of will attract something in there and we'll get a bit of a feeding frenzy which might attract, you know, Hosanna or Tandi or Tingana or any one of them. So that's the kind of plan at least we're going to try. I'm still trying to get sun cream out of my eyes and so I've had a watering eye. I'm sure it must be bright red by now. I must look like I've got pink eye at this stage of the game. It's a rather irritating, I must be honest. It's, I hate it when I get sun cream in my eye but it is the way it goes. It is a struggle, Emma. It's been over an hour of struggling and the wind is not helping. As you drive, this wind hitting your eye when it's burning, it just makes it feel that much worse. But it's okay. We'll survive, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to be blind anyway by the time I finish this job from staring into the sun so often. So, you know, this will just accelerate the process slightly, which is, is what it is. At least I will have seen some good things by the time that happens later in life. <laughs> Emma says that was a bit dark. Yes, Emma, it was a bit dark, wasn't it? But uh, some truth in it as well. Um, I'm pretty sure staring into the sun every day is probably not the best idea, as I'm doing right now, actually. The sun is at that perfect angle where it's just next to the camera lens so that it just hits you at that perfect... Uh, I believe a lot of you are giving me sympathy. Yes, I even look, I even have my little multicolored towels to be able to wipe my eye when it's stinging. So there we go, we've got... A pink one which was in the pack so there's the pink one over there then we have a little blue one which is 
a, a nice color that one and then we've got the bright luminous green now the orange one was part of the pack i'll try find it now there we go there's the orange one so the orange one was also out in this but this has been relegated to the cleaning of the car cloth so this is now my dashboard cleaning cloth as you can see it's nice and shiny at the moment and then these are the ones that i've been using to dry my tears as i whinge about my eye and the river that i'm crying about it so you know luckily we have a, at least something to kind of deal with it Am I expecting, sorry, what, Emma? I didn't hear what Emma said. Ah, uh, cloth sponsor. Mm, no, not really, but I suppose we do go through quite a lot of cloths in, in, at Wild Earth. It was quite something to see how many cloths we go through. Uh, between the camera operators and the presenters, we do, uh, well, even FC actually, we have a weekly cleanup. It used to be a Sunday, then it was moved to a Monday, and now it's become Tidy Tuesday. And Tidy Tuesday is basically a full scrub down of the final control, all the vehicles, um, the cameras, and we try and kind of clean everything up and make sure everything is looking in good condition for the week. And so, you know, we go through cloths there, and then inevitably by the next week, that same cloth is lost. Um, how, where cloths go, they must go to the same place that socks go. It's an island where they all kind of go and take it easy and have a big fat party and laugh at us as we try and look for them because there's definitely this feeling of um, socks and, and things that go off and just magically disappear. Right, now I believe we're losing signal so before we do, let's send you back across to Sydney. So you can see that they've got uh, quite a very lovely cat there. This cat is very much relaxed at the moment and nothing is happening. And this is very normal. Cats, this is what they do when it's too hot during the afternoon. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the school drive. And most of all, welcome to the kids from the Avoca West. For questions and comments, you can ask your teachers to ask on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. You can follow, also follow us on YouTube chat stream. I will be here with you following this lovely leopard. Oliver, this side where I am, by the western side of Kruger National Park in South Africa, can be very much hot. The temperature for the past two, three days, it was between 21, 24. But you can get temperature which can go high up to 38 to 40 degrees. So it's quite a very hot area. Romy, we have got different types of animals. We have got animals that are active from the morning until the evening. When the evening comes, they sleep. Those are called the diurnal animals. So they are only active during the day. At night, we have got animals who are active from the beginning of the evening until early morning. Those ones are called the nocturnal animals. They are much more active during the night. And in the mornings, some of these animals are still very active from the evening until early mornings. Those are called the crispusculars. Example of those ones are the animals such as jackals. So they can do both night and little bit of morning activities. So you can see it looks like Osana is dreaming, maybe he's dreaming climbing a tree because this cat is very good on climbing trees. I have seen him many times doing that. So now uh, let's cross over to the Masai Mara in Kenya and see how my other colleague David is doing with regards to the animal search this afternoon. Good luck, Hosanna. Continue dreaming, and we'll be watching you and see where you're going to fit in the dynamics of the leopards of Juma. Watching the sun go down here, 
in the Mara Triangle, the elephant Sehadalia went a different direction, but the sun will always set in the west, and that does not change. And that's why I've been enjoying that sun going down. Well, I've not been very lucky to find my sausage tree pair of lions, but I'm still looking. So what I want to do is to move forward. I think I might have seen a ostrich from a distance, and next to the ostrich is a herd of elephants. Ostrich are rather sometimes difficult to see, like this time around, when we had so many wildebeest around during the migration. I think there's one I've seen which will be good. Ostriches, males and females being very different. And boys and girls, very big welcome. And we are in a country called Kenya. And we're in a game reserve called Masai Mara Triangle. And, and we're gonna show you some elephants from a distance. Look at that, boys and girls. Remember, should you have any questions, boys and girls, you may ask them through your teachers. If you have any comments, you may do the same. Look at how big the elephant is. This is the largest mammal in the world. The coolest animal I have ever seen, what do I say? I mean, there's so many cool animals here in Africa. And I would say the Advak. Advak is an animal that is nocturnal, only coming out at night. The coolest animal I have ever seen. But James, just to let you know, my favorite animal is that elephant that you just saw on the right there. Do you see that, James? That is my favorite animal. And maybe before the end of the drive, if you're lucky, we might see an advac. There's a small little pig walking somewhere. I'm sure Archie will. Can you see that, boys and girls? I'm sure all of you saw the movie The Lion King. And that was Pumba in that movie. That is a warthog walking past the ostrich. I can't remember who ostrich was in the movie Lion King, but I'm sure all of you can remember Pumba. Look at his size compared to the size of the elephants. One commonality between those two is that the pumba or the warthog has tusks just like those elephants that you just saw there. But of course, the warthog is small in size and her tusks are so small. Elephants are big and the tusks are also big. Serena, male elephants can become very big. What I can see now, I think all these are females, but when they get very big, some of them can weigh up to six tons. Can you imagine? Six ton, I'm talking of almost 13,000 pounds in weight. They are huge, Serena. They are massive. And elephants are the largest mammals that we have on land. Look at that particular one there. And elephants are herbivores. Habibos meaning they eat grass, they eat anything green that was eating that bush in front of it. I think this is the same case it's doing here, feeding on that bush. So most important, we got elephants all over the world that are different. The ones we have here in Africa, both boys and girls, what I like calling males and females, will have those tasks you see on that one. But if you go to other parts of the world, like in Asia, you'll notice their females or their girls do not have the tusks. The tusks will only be on the males. The tusks are very important to elephants because they'll use them to dig the ground. If they need, say, to bring down a bush or branches, they also use the tusks to bring down the bush so that they can reach the food. How beautiful is this, boys and girls? The small little bird there, very good. And we call that a lapwing. A lapwing is called a crowned lapwing. And they're birds that like running on the ground. And they're slightly bit bigger than the size of your arms, say like two sizes or three of your arms. 
and they'll always have their eggs and chicks on the ground and of course she's feeding on something there they like to eat insects if they get seeds also from the grass they'll also feed on the same see her pink legs but they have always to be look out, looking out on certain small little animals like jackals which will come and feed on their eggs or their chicks and when that happens they become very vocal and they make a lot of noise to get them away from there oops you just fly look at that elephant walking majestically elephant is one of the animals that we call the big five of africa now let's take you to another big five in south africa You can see that I've got this animal who is still on bed at the moment, but this is not a surprise. A cat such as the leopard and the lions during the daytime is when they're on bed. Only when the weather conditions are right, when it's cloudy, is when you will find them doing some walking activities. But now they're just waiting for the sun to cool down <coughs> and then, sorry for that, they're just waiting for the sun to cool down and then move around here and which is something I am waiting for. Let's hope he's going to start moving around while you're still watching. Andrew, the, the, the boy leopards, they, they've got a big body size and the girl leopards, they've got a small body size. So that is how I easily distinguish uh, between the two. Sarina, the leopards can grow very big. The big leopards can go up to 90 kilograms. That is quite a lot. They can be very much heavy, but they don't have to be much heavier because their activities include climbing trees. If they are too heavy, they will have a problem when it comes to the climbing of trees. So it's good that uh, when they have eaten something, they can also lie down on the ground because by the trees, the branches, they are not very good in terms of holding them when the stomach is full. So when the stomach is full, they prefer to lie down on the ground. So this one we are seeing now, he has just been to the water hole and the stomach was full a little bit, but now with too much water as well, you can see the stomach is big. So by the branch on a tree, it won't be easy for the stomach to get accommodated. Zayn, uh, these animals are depending on some of the natural water holes and they're also getting water from some of the man-made water holes. And how they get water is interesting. These animals, they have got to go and use their tongue in order to get hold of the water and get the water from the tongue until they're full. So it's quite a very long process. They don't go there and just have one sip. They spend much time drinking. Sometimes they even uh, drink and wait and observe if there's anything coming and still carry on drinking until they are full. So how they drink is similar to the domestic dogs. If you have seen the domestic dogs before drinking, the lepers, they do the same thing. So now let's go back to one of my uh, colleagues, Tristan. He is also driving to try and find you something interesting this afternoon. We are indeed, and we must have some animals close by because you can see in that tree, there's lots and lots of big birds that are called vultures. And this is a good indication or a good sign for us that there might be a predator somewhere here. As Sydney said, my name is Tristan. On camera, I've got Asenzo, and it is a very warm welcome to all of you from Rusty, which is the name of the car that we're on. And I hope that you're going to have a wonderful time with us and are having a wonderful time with us. Now, I was saying that these vultures are always a good sign. They're a good sign 
understand that there might be something like lions around there's definitely a big piece of meat somewhere here and the reason why I say that is because we've got a lot of birds here there's lots and lots of vultures spread out we've also got lots of different species of vulture and bird of prey here so if we start on the left hand tree the one on that side you'll see that there is a bird between well a bird on the far left now that bird on the far left is called a hooded vulture so that is that one over there that is the hooded vulture then the one in the middle is a tawny eagle and then the one on the right is a white back vulture now when you get those three together that is always a very good sign that there is a carcass here and particularly the tawny eagle the tawny eagle only eats fresh meat and so there must be a fresh carcass and then there's another bird on the tree to the right hand side which is right at the top which is called a white-headed vulture. Now they also will only eat off fresh meat. And so we're going to try and see what we've got here. There were lion tracks around here this morning. And so maybe they managed to make a kill somewhere and we'll get lucky and find it. But there's definitely a carcass somewhere here. Yes, Lauren, they only eat meat, these guys. Vultures are very good at finding meat and scavenging and looking for what they need and then being able to feed off it. So that's what they eat. And they design perfectly with big beaks that are very sharp that they can dig into flesh and cut it and make sure that they get big chunks. And depending on the size of their beak will tell you what kind of, well, what kind of bird they are when it comes to feeding on the carcass. The hooded vulture has a very small beak. And so it eats last. It will eat in between all of the sort of ribs and the spine and where all the little bits of meat are left whereas the white-headed and the white backs and the lapid face vultures they're going to eat big chunks of meat in those and, and use those big heavy beaks to get it now there's just birds everywhere so I'm trying to see where this could be it could be anywhere here I think maybe down there's a little drainage line that it might be in Elijah I don't know if they're the toughest but they definitely one of the animals that can eat probably the most rotten meat of all of these guys they can eat things that well many others can't and so they're a good animal to clean everything up but they are a very tough bird as well they've got you know big bodies and in terms of all the other birds they will out challenge the other birds and make sure that the other birds don't get anywhere near them but I'm surprised that there's we haven't seen anything yet there's definitely something here we've just got to be able to find it I might have to get off my car and go walk around a little bit to try and see if I can find it because it might be sitting in a thicket somewhere where we can't see from the car and obviously when you walk on foot it's much easier to find tracks or to hear things and so that's what we might have to do in order to find what we're looking for but definitely there is a sign of something being dead Alice, how big is a vulture's egg? Well, a vulture's egg will probably be, I would say, just a little bit bigger than my fist. So that would be what? I would say maybe five inches, roughly, about that size. So quite big, so like that. That would be a kind of size of a vulture's egg that it will lay. Most of the time they lay two eggs, and then they, only one will normally survive and make it to adulthood. The other one sometimes will push the egg out if it hasn't hatched, or it will actually kill its sibling to be able to not have any competition so it has a lot of food so it's a bit nasty right now I need to try and see if I can get off here while we've got some light because there's not very much light at all left and so I'm going to try and just have a little look around see if I can find what's dead for all of you and while we do that let's send you back across to Sydney You can see that uh, Hosanna is now in the middle of the dreams. Now he is sleeping flat. I can see that the ears are not even moving. Only the breathing rate I can see is very high. Now he is on a deep sleep. You can see he's got some hairs there uh, next to the mouth. So those hairs, they serve as sense organs. So they can be able to use them in order to check the spaces when they are walking in between the trees. You can see now the ears are moving. Oliver, the leopards can go very fast. They can go at a speed of uh, approximately 80 to 90 kilometers per hour. That is too fast. But when it comes to hunting activities, he doesn't prefer to use that speed. This animal is well equipped with quite a lot of beautiful spots. 
these sports, they are not there just for the decoration. They are there in order to help them to match the surrounding, to become camouflaged. So camouflage is just a term referring to matching with the surrounding. So these animals can be able to match until the prey animal approach them very close to a distance of about less than 10 meters. Mostly they attack an animal when it's about 5 meters. Charlie, uh, unfortunately, the leopards are not the biggest predators here by the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park. The biggest predator we have got is the lions. So the leopards, they are just coming after the lions. But when talking in terms of the carnivores, they are not even the second ones. The second biggest carnivore we have got after the lion, it is the hyena. Joey, the leopards are not grazers, but don't get surprised. Sometimes the cats and dogs, you will see them feeding on green grass. Reason for them to eat the green grass is when they have got problems in the stomach. The tapeworms, some of the uh, problems that we experience as well, animals, they also experience the same. They eat grass when having that just to treat that problem. On, on daily basis, these kind of animals, they feed on meat, they are carnivores, and they target the small animals. The small animals that are ranging from 12 kilograms and up to 25 kilograms can even take something which is 40 kilograms and more. Size of the warthog can be taken down by these kind of animals. And we're not interested on that. They can even eat insects. They catch some of the insects as well. So maybe he is going to wake up here shortly and show us what he is thinking about to do next. So now let's go back to the Masai Mara in Kenya where David is driving still at the moment. Maybe he is following some of the tracks. Wow. We just got some news from my friends. They might have spotted some lions from a distance. I do not think is the pride I'm looking for, but most likely, even if not that pride, it will be something interesting. The two pride that will be in this area, the sausage tree pride or the Owino pride. So this is the area, but this is the boundary. I would say the Owino pride, this is the farthest they come, and then that direction, and the sausage tree pride this side. So I want to turn here, and find out what pride that could be because the guy from the mine told me there are five, five of them, and five chances are it could be the Owino pride. Sorry, I missed the question from Olivia as I just get my binoculars to look. Bring me the question again, M from Olivia. Well, Olivia, that's a very good question. I'll tell you, when you look at lions, the females do a bigger job of protecting their babies than the males. When you look at the lions, Olivia, you'll get the lions from what you call prides of lions or coalition of lions. Prides of lions will be females with their young ones and coalitions will be males and males only. So the females always will be with the young ones and they are always alert. They do all the hunting but they also make sure they protect the babies. Once in a while you'll see males coming in to protect the babies but Olivia would say females do a bigger job of protecting their cubs than the males. This is the area I think the lions have been spotted. Not sure. Let me just get my binoculars. I have seen something like lions. Good 
cute question, Margaret. Lions in a day. See, a fully grown male lion, for example, would eat anything from 20 to 30 kilograms of food. I'm talking about 45, 50 pounds, sometimes up to 60 pounds of food. That's what elephant, I mean, lions could eat in a day. And that's for the males. The females, slightly bit less. Males tend to eat more than females. Hopefully we catch up with these lions and see if they might go and hunt and see them eating and we'll have a better feel of how much they would eat in a day. So this is the area they were last seen by my friend. But not sure we can see these tombstone gazelles, yeah? And as I'm going to get my binoculars and look around, let's first go back to Hosanna the Leopard. So you can see that Osana is really enjoying his sleep. He's just changing the sides every time. Look at that. Look at how the legs are relaxed. Even folding the front legs there. So you can see that uh, he's sure of his safety when he's sleeping here. I think sleeping in the bush like this, hey, might be very dangerous sometimes, but because he's a predator and he's a dangerous animal, he's safe to do so. But for animals such as impalas to sleep like this, so for the animals such as impalas to sleep like this, um, I think is uh, is not something for them because it can be dangerous. So the reason why this cat is breathing like this is that the temperature is too hot at the moment. And if you check there, the stomach is full as well. So he must, a lot of processes are taking place at the moment in the stomach. Digestive system is taking place and the water that is just got there as well is being absorbed. The sun is very much hot at the moment. When the sun is very hot, they breathe very fast in order to also cool the body temperature. So a lot of things are happening. Look at that. You can see he's changing uh, the side now. And when he's exposing the underparts, Olivia, these cats can be able to sleep long hours. They can sleep for about 17, 18 hours a day. Yes, you can see them doing some activities during the day, but for them to catch something during the day, uh, the chances are very there. The opportunistic hunters, if anything comes their way, like when he's sleeping now, if any prey present himself, he's going to wake up and become active as if he's not the one who was sleeping, and he will take action against that. So look at that. Alex, they climb trees a lot and the leopards are very much fast. If you look at those legs there, you will see that they have got very strong muscles. So these muscles is the one that helps them in order to climb trees. And they even got some kind of a claws that helps them to grab. It's just that if you can check right there on the foot structures, they have got retractable claws. They can be able to bring their claws in and out. So now you can see that the claws are hidden. They will only bring them when they want to use them and then that helps them when they're climbing trees. Margaret, uh, this leopard is looking very much big, but let me tell you, he is still very, very young. He is just about uh, 18 to 22 um, uh, months at the moment. It's just approaching two years. So he still has got a long way to go because they can live up to 15 years. So uh, 15 to 17 years for this cat is enough. Uh, Tyler, the, the baby leopards can be very much small when they're born. So the size of the baby leopards when they're born, it is like this. So when they're born, you will see that they will be 
of this size and the mother is responsible to move them around. You will see normally holding them from the side of the neck when they're moving them from one place to the next. They've got to move them every time for the safety of their calves. Lauren, the lepers, they are non-seasonal breeders, so they can have baby at any time of the year. But for the cats to have babies is determined by quite a lot of factors. Like sometimes some of these cats, they've got babies and lose them because of other animals such as hyenas. When the little ones are dead, it kickstarts some of the hormones in their body in order to become active again to have more babies. In other words, they can be able to have babies at the time of the year, but they can have these babies determined by quite a lot of factors. So now let's go back to David who is by the Masai Mara. Already David is in darkness. The sun is gone already by the Masai Mara. I will be here waiting to see what is going to happen. Well, boys and girls, it's getting very dark here. And when it gets dark, we may end up using what we call infrared. Infrared helps us to see animals without influencing their behavior or without disturbing them and they'll keep doing what they're doing. I've not been very lucky to see the pride of lions was promised by my friend, but I've not lost hope. The challenge here in the bush, you need to be very patient. Patience here is very key, and you need to keep looking, you keep turning every angle, until maybe you're lucky to see what you're looking for. What you can see from a distance, I'm seeing lots of antelopes, that we call the tombs and gazelles, but I would have been... Sorry, what's the question about from Nathan? Let me just look somewhere. Nathan, I'm trying to use my binoculars as much as it's getting dark. Yes and no. Yes, on lucky days, Nathan, we see lions, and certain days we just don't see them. And that's what Arch is trying to look. So, Nathan, hopefully today will be one of our lucky days to spot lions. Or what you see there from a distance, not very clearly, those are small antelopes that we call Thompson gazelles. Thompson gazelles, and this is the favorite food for the cheetah. There's another cat here. In Africa, it's called cheetah, and cheetahs love to eat Thompson gazelles. So we're going to move forward a little bit and see if those lions I was told maybe they walked in this direction because when it cools off like this and the temperatures are down, they tend to walk a lot. Now, let's go back first to the leopard before maybe seeing you much later. So you can see now he is holding the ground with one of the front foot. So what this leopard is doing now is trying to relax by all means. So these legs are moving a lot because it's the one he's using when he's going for hunting and when he's climbing trees. So he needs to relax much longer. The legs must have to relax much longer. So you can see that this cat is uh, enjoying uh, his sleep. Uh, Lauren, uh, around the leopard, if you check, the, there is uh, quite a lot of things flying, which are the flies. These flies are attracted by the blood. 
So this animal has just been from the food earlier on during the day and because of that they end up picking up a lot of blood here by the front legs and also by the face but they've got a way to get rid of those kind of blood you will see them licking their front legs and also cleaning their faces but not everything is washed away which then end up attracting some of these bugs to come and fly on them. Isabel, the leopard tooth can be very much long and those are very much important tool. They can grow up to uh, 8 millimeters. So that is quite very much long and it helps them when they are going for fighting purposes. Remember, these animals do fight the prey when they are catching because the prey defend themselves. But also they fight some of the males when they are fighting for the place, for the territory. Where they are staying, they are, some of them are territorial holders. They've got a way of marking the area and say, this is my place, I'm staying here with my family. If anybody comes here, will know me very well. So so these kind of cats, they've got those kind of behaviors. So you can see that there's still some little bit of movement there. Haley, you don't have to scream when you are near the cats or the leopard. The problem is how we scream is different. And some of the people, their voices, they can make sound such as a, D, uh, they can make a sound which is similar to a distress call. A distress call is a call given by the animal when it's caught by a predator. So if you make noise, you might fascinate these animals to come closer to investigate what is happening. And remember, when you're in the car, these animals don't really see you. They see you and the car as one object. So it's very difficult for these animals to separate the two. To distinguish between the car and you by the seats is not very easy. But if you make noise, you will attract them to come to investigate. And fast movement of the hands when you're moving, taking pictures can also attract them. So you can see that it's very much a sleepy, but I can promise you now the sun is about to go down. This is going to be the beginning of the activity patterns of the, the cats such as the leopards and the lions. So now let's go to David by the Masai Mara, who's got the and spotted predator has got a lion at the moment. Well, boys and girls, finally I got what I was looking for. My mind was very concentrated to make sure we get you some lions before the end of the drive. And how is this? How lucky we have this pride of lions here. I'm yet to identify which pride this is. But in total, we got five five of them together I'm guessing is one particular pride that I call the Owino pride of lions not very sure but I'll be confirming on a closer look you remember I said earlier as it cools off they tend to move the temperatures are down and cats don't like you know being active when it's very warm just like Hosanna that you saw being snoozy lions also when it's very warm they tend to just to lay down. Dion, very good question. In general, lions will look for prey. They will look for their own food. You see how they're running there, Leon? That's how they run when they want to get them f themselves some dinner, for example. It's a bit late here. But if some animal or prey comes very close to them, where they are, 
they will take that opportunity and pounce on it and get it and of course enjoy it for dinner or for lunch but in general Leon, lions will always look for their own food and they'll always hunt their own food i got a feeling this is the owino pride of lions and all lions we have in this area they got different names lions tend to live together i want to drive more forward and walk with them and because we know them so well we follow them like almost every day we can identify and we know in this group there are this number of females there are this number of males there are this number of cubs and we know them very well so this particular pride here we call it the owino pride and it's always or it consists of four females and one young boy let's see how is that actually that good or keep going all right let's see from here what it looks like Sarah I would say we are scared of lions more than they're scared of us but so long as you do not get on your way it's always okay now we are in the canal you look at that one Sarah and those other ones there you notice they're all walking away and not bothered with us because we are in the car we are respecting them it's a bit dark here it's almost seven o'clock east african time and that's why you see them not looking the normal color they are because we are using infrared but we'll try and get you as close as we can without interfering with them and you not notice i'm not using my spotlight for the car just to make sure i do not shine anything on their way they might be going for a hunt and if they're going to do that i do not want to influence that uh, decision to them first of all infrared camera will always make us see things in the darkness now let's get a little closer there and tell you exactly what it is it just tends to shine the light into them remotely but the animals do not pick it or they do not notice the light going into them but we can see very well when we got infrared on them unlike the issue of that's having a pool maybe it's having a toilet break when the rest are still marching so an infrared camera in general what you see you always see black and white black and white but you don't see the colors We'll take you across to South Africa for maybe more tracking of leopards. Indeed, so we were following up on those vultures, trying to see if there was any sign of a kill, and we didn't find any kill itself or any dead animal, but we did find tracks for the lions. So that's a lion nest track that you see there is a young lioness and if you go forward a little bit you'll see on the road where she actually laid down so there you go that's where she was lying down during the course of the I think early hours of this morning and so what I think has happened is these guys must have killed something they've eaten it all and there was just a bit of a skeleton left and that's what's attracted these vultures here and so there's actually not really anything for us to find I think the lions have moved off and the vultures are now just trying to find a place to roost before the sun starts to set and so unfortunately I don't know if we're going to find these lions we definitely will try our very best but it's going to be a bit tricky because I need to see which way the tracks go Catalina you want to know how big a lion paw is in size well this paw here is not a very big one this is for a young lioness and so her paw would be the size of I'm trying to think what it would be a good thing to compare it to um, probably the size of a grapefruit so probably about that size would be of a, a young lioness but a big male well he'll be about that size he'll have a really big paw in fact bigger than my hand is how the big the young males track will be so they'll have a really really large paw but look how beautiful this is we riot up on a ridge and you can see the most beautiful sun with the drakens at the moment 
So right off into the western side is where the sun is busy setting. There's a bit of a dead tree and then the Drakensberg Mountains, which is the longest mountain range that we have in Africa. And that is the northern side of the mountain range. This runs from this area all the way south down towards sort of Natal, which is an area on the eastern side of South Africa. So it goes a long, 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 long way from where we are now, which is pretty incredible. There you go, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now watch how quickly the sun goes down. You'll see it will start to touch the mountain already and then disappear. Now while we watch the sun go down and think about where we're going to go next, let's send you back to Sydney with my favorite leopard, Hosanna. I can see that uh, the favorite leopard is now becoming active. He's just lying down there. He was up just now, and I thought he was going to uh, move from here, maybe to somewhere else, unless it was just a dream. <laughs> Look at that. You can see the pink nose. So when he starts to get old to eight years is when that nose is going to will start getting dark. So older than eight, you will see the nose will become very dark. Elena, look at that. So you can see they are just about to become active. Yes, uh, Elena, lepers, they do uh, wake up when there is a loud noise. Even when the noise is not loud, anything that makes noise, from tiny little noise to the big noises, they are going to wake up or move the ears to check what is happening. So you can see now there's uh, quite a lot of movement from the body now. So the sun has gone down and the temperature is becoming perfect. You can see a uh, stretching and he's starting to bite something and opening the mouth is showing you that they are just about yawning. It's telling you that uh, now I'm going to be active anytime soon. So you can see that uh, this cat is not going to wake up now for you to see him as a whole. And it has been a tremendous afternoon with uh, quite a lot of sightings all the way from Masai Mara in Kenya. You saw some lions there. And down here, we are lucky with the uh, um, leopard, a tingana, and some other interesting animals and trekking that you have seen this afternoon. And I really enjoyed having you as part of my viewers this afternoon. And most of all, thank you very, very much for all your questions and comments.